Hey everyone, welcome to Church Online. Let us know what the highlight of your week was in the chat. Let's kick our service off in prayer. Father, we just thank you that we can be a light in our community, that you have called us into this space. I pray that you would bless our people. You would bless us, Father, to carry your word into the streets of Lake Macquarie in Newcastle. That we can continue to expand your kingdom. Amen. Well, last Saturday was Night Under the Stars. Our community and church came together and we got to celebrate what Carter Home Project does for the homeless people in our city. It was a golden night. Music, food, raffles, and the support of 32 people sleeping in their cars overnight. You would have been so proud of us as a church as we actively demonstrated the love of Jesus. This week, we've got Mindy sharing on a church in every street. But before we hear from her, we're going into some worship. So stir up your faith and let the Holy Spirit minister to you. I'm blessed to those who run to Him, who place their hope and confidence in Jesus. He won't forsake them. Blessed to those who seek his face, who bend their knee and fix the case on Jesus. They won't be shaken, but come on and praise the Lord with me. Sing if you love his name, come on and lift your You'll see his glory. Blessed are those who die to live, whose joy it is to give it all the glory. And for him only, oh Jesus, all for your glory. Come on and pray. Your offering, 
have been so excited to share this message with you because it is a new mission for our church and it is about our city. Before we start, I have to confess to you, I'm not actually a Novocastrian. I was born and bred in Sydney and yeah, come on, Sydney side is in the room. Yeah. And we're not talking northern beaches like posh girl Sydney. I'm talking western suburbs, tough girl Sydney. I'm talking way out west. But I moved to Newcastle and I met a very handsome Novocastrian. His name is John Newsom, front row. And I never looked back. But what's not to love about our city? We've got the greatest beaches, east coast beaches in Australia, I'd like to say. Uh, the biggest saltwater lake in the southern hemisphere. We've got the vineyards and the mountains. Very, less traffic than Sydney, come on. And if you look at this map, you'll see our beautiful church is like smack bam in the middle of Newcastle and Lake Macquarie. Look at our position. I love it. Up on this hill, right in the middle. Look one way and we've got Newcastle City. Look the other. And we've got all of Lake Macquarie stretched out before us. And I had mentioned some of this on Vision Sunday, but I had read the stats for Newcastle and Lake Macquarie. And some of the stats really concerned me. Who reads stats? I know how to be cool and have fun. So I read the stats, and these are some of them, and I wanted to actually show you the numbers. Higher than national average in our beautiful, strong city for long-term mental health issues. We're talking heart disease, kidney disease, cancer, things like that, serious stuff. 39% higher than the national average when it comes to mental health conditions. How could that be? That talks about anxiety and depression in that space, as well as many other things. Also, more people saying they have no religion and more single parent families. Now, I have to tell you, Newcastle is still pretty good. Some of the other stats were great. Employment numbers were good. Household income numbers were good. All the materialness, all the materialness of our city is good. But for me, it was the inner, the inward condition of our city that was lacking. An outward sign of the inner need for God. It was, it was like a mark or a measure of the spiritual atmosphere of our region. And that's when I had that audacious thought, what if Macquarie together, word for 2024, we could change the spiritual atmosphere of our region? What if we could do that? In such a way that we can actually look at those numbers. Who wants to see them come down? And we will be able to say, God has been in this city. How good is that? And then I thought, oh, how am I going to explain that to you all? But I saw it in the Bible. Have a look at this scripture. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you and pray to the Lord on its behalf. So we're going to do that. But I still didn't actually know how we were going to actually do that. Just had this in my heart. And then Jesus spoke these words to me. In a dream, he said, a church on every street. Now, you've been hearing us say that all year. We're going to unfold that right now. A church on every street. It was so clear. And I saw a map and I saw all of your homes and all of your workplaces circled. And I realized, wow, if we could, our reach would be incredible. And that is all of you geotagged, Geeky, as I am, I exported your addresses out of the database, figured out your geotag and put it into a map. And so that actually means that we cover so much territory. If we took seriously the spiritual ground that God has given us, wow. Now, I didn't know how we'd actually do it. You know, what does that mean, a church on every street? So I did Google it. I thought maybe there's another church who's figured it all out. We can just glean some of that from them. But when I Googled it, nothing came up. And I realized it's a unique mission. He's just given to us. Our personal God, our Yahweh, has given us a personal Macquarie mission together, and it is a church on every street. So good? Okay. So what does it mean? What is he asking us to do? He's not asking us to start campuses in our street, although you are welcome to. That's a whole nother message. He's not asking you to host Sunday gatherings. He's asking you to be the church on your street. 
And it, it, what does it mean to be the church? We, we have varying ideas of what that looks like, you know. But I wanna go back to what it actually means to be the church. Because it's powerful and some of its meaning has been lost in time and in culture and in translation. The very first time the word church appears in the Bible is Jesus himself. And he speaks these words. He's talking to Peter. He said, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it or overcome it. That's a very powerful statement from Jesus Christ right there. The rock he's building his church on is what Peter had just said, the revelation of Jesus Christ. He said, who do you say I am, Peter? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And on the revelation of Jesus Christ, he's gonna build his church. That's our foundation. And nothing's gonna overcome it, people. And when he used the word church there, the word he used was ecclesia. It actually has a different meaning to our current understanding. Ecclesia means called out ones or governing assembly. Interesting. But Peter knew exactly what he meant. Because Peter knew in Greek culture, the ecclesia was all the blokes over the age of 18 had authority to govern for their city. And what would happen if decisions needed to be made or nutted out, a crier, a town crier, would walk through the streets, I can imagine he'd have a great big bell, and he'd call out Ecclesia, Ecclesia, and all the called out ones would gather, they would discuss and they would debate and they would vote and they would make decisions for their city. Isn't that powerful? So when Jesus said, I will build my ecclesia or my church, he's saying, I will build my governing assembly of people and they will have power and authority for the kingdom of God to make decisions on behalf of the spiritual atmosphere of their city. Wow. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. If only we could just get that first revelation of the first meaning of the word church into our system. Then what happened, of course, there, there was no cultural equivalent when we came to translate the Bible into Latin, German and English for the Ecclesia because that governmental system didn't exist. And so William Tyndall translated it to assembly. Pretty good. So every time the word Ecclesia appeared in the Bible, all 120 something of them, he translated it assembly. It's pretty good, kind of sounds like a governing assembly. And then along came a man called King James. Do you know what he did? He made the King James Bible, very, very good, but he was an incredibly powerful man. He was one of the most powerful men that had lived in his time. He was the King of England, the King of Ireland, and the King of Scotland, and the head of the church. And if you argued with him, he chopped off your head. So he had all power and authority. And he, he organized a rewriting of the Bible, a new translation, and it was very, very good. He had the greatest Greek and Hebrew scholars work on them, but he gave them a few rules. And one of the rules he gave them is, every time you see the word ecclesia in the Bible, I don't want you to translate it to assembly. I want you to translate it to church. And to him, the church meant the institution that he led. And in that moment, the revelation of the authority of the church and the power of the people, he didn't want the people to have power. He was king of everything. The power of the people, that little bit of revelation got lost in time and in translation. Let's bring it back to life. <laughs> but the word church is beautiful. The one he replaced it with actually is a beautiful word. I know he meant it to be the institution of the church, but this is what it means. It means belonging to the Lord. And Jesus said, I will build my church. So we do belong to the Lord, whether we're gathered here together or whether you're out there being the church on your street, you belong to the Lord. And then the third meaning of the word, we get from the word of God itself. So when the Bible describes the church, and when the Bible describes the church, it describes the church very uniquely as the body of Christ. And we know that, don't we? As the body of Christ. There's a couple of scriptures I'll show you. Ephesians 1. And God placed all things under Jesus' feet and appointed Jesus head over everything for the church, which is his body. And in Colossians 1, it said, and he is the head of the body, which is the church. And so whether you're here in this room and you're playing your part as part of the body, or whether you're out there in the world, you are the body of Christ, so when you extend a hand of kindness, whose hand is it? It's the hand of Jesus Christ. 
You are the arms of Jesus Christ. You're the feet everywhere you go. You take Jesus. You're the heart. And you're his eyes. And I pray that we would begin to see the world through the eyes that Jesus Christ has given us. Good? Let's do it. Okay. So when he says, a church on every street, this is what you need to know. You are his called out ones. You have authority to govern on behalf of the kingdom of God, particularly in regard to this city. You belong to the Lord and you are the very presence of Jesus Christ himself in the world. Because Jesus' body isn't here anymore, is it? His presence is with us, but his body is not. And this is what he said to his disciples after his resurrection. He says, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. And then he breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. What a beautiful moment that that was. And he gave us this commission. You should know it, Matthew 28, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them everything that I have taught you, and I will be with you even to the end of the age. So good. You should know that. That's one of our vision scriptures. But I want you to see yourself there in that moment because Jesus wasn't just talking to the apostles. He was talking to 500 people. We find that out when we read Corinthians, that 500 people were present there and he'd called them to a mountain and he was very specific about the location. He went to Galilee to give this great commission just before his ascension because he knew most of his believers were in Galilee. All of you, he wanted to be where you are to give you this call. And it says just prior in that scripture, it says, uh, and they all went to the place where he had told them to go. So he had planned this location and it's a mountaintop moment. And in the book of Matthew, there's a few mountaintop moments. You've got the Sermon on the Mount. That was a revolutionary teaching for its time. You've got the transfiguration of Jesus Christ on the mountain where the disciples saw his glory. And then you have this moment on the mountain where he's giving the Great Commission. These are incredible moments. And in your life, you will have these mountaintop moments where God is setting apart a a way to speak to you and say, this is a defining moment for you. I'm teaching you or sending you or doing something significant. You will have had those in your life. Can you remember some of those times? There will be more. Look out. The church has them too. The church has these mountaintop commissioning big moments in its history, in our 55 years of beautiful history at Macquarie. And I'm daring today to say this is a mountaintop message where God is shifting the focus to what he's going to do. It's like an apostolic moment in the life of the church. God is writing a story, a big, beautiful story about the history of Macquarie Life Church. And we are participating in some of those chapters. He is writing a new chapter. And that chapter is called A Church on Every Street. I need you to have faith with me for this. Now, Dan's gonna come along in a few weeks and he's gonna be very practical. He's he's the evangelist on our team and he's gonna give you practical ways to be able to be a church on every street. My job as the apostle on the team is to call you to the mission. Number one, you need to know your mission. And many of you actually already do this. It's been the culture of our church that we have inherited. But right now, if we all know that this is our mission together, we'll be doing like Jordan said, we'll be spurring one another on. That's what it's gonna look like and what it's gonna feel like when together we are so intentional. We know what we're doing. What are we doing? We're a church on every street. Once we know our mission, we can do it. The other thing you need to know is your street. And here's a great example of us all cheering each other on. Jackie Hurst, who we love, she's our receptionist, and she sends a message saying she's running late because she is talking to her neighbour. It's obviously an important conversation, important enough to be late to work, Jackie. 
And we kind of laughed because we know Jackie, the friendliest person on the face of the earth. But also we were proud of her because we knew the mission. We knew she was on mission. I'm not endorsing being late to work to anyone, just saying. (laughs) So your street could actually be your physical street. And I actually do have someone in my street who we have a shared acquaintance that we both care very much about. So every now and then she knocks on my door and we talk about this acquaintance and we talk about what else is going on in her world. And at the end, I summon up my courage and I say, can I pray for you? And we pray together. And I've done that with her for years. And only a few months ago, she knocked on my door and I opened the door and she bursts in with conversation every time. And this time she burst in and the very first thing she said was, can you pray for me? The first time she's turned it around because she had a need and she had learnt there is a God who can meet that need and I know a girl in my street who knows God and if I go to her, we can pray. So your location might be your street, but your, your, your physical street, but it could actually be anything. We're talking about the influence that you have been given. We're talking about your workplace. We're talking about the things you do in life. And many of the interpretations of go and make disciples because of the Greek and the way they look at the verbs, they read it like this, as you are going, make disciples. So as you are going along your way, in the places he already has you, make disciples. Next week, John Newsom is off to Alice Springs. (laughs) He's doing some music there because part of his street is his influence. And that will be the same for many of you. Part of your street could be your influence. And so he's going into a town where they really need God right now and a little deposit of hope. Uh, I've heard of some bosses who see their workplaces, their staff and their teams as their church and they pastor them and care for them and shepherd them like it's their own church. Your influence, your club, Manor House. I saw Ian the other day and Manor House was on and he was on car park and he's doing his thing, letting people in. And I'm having a conversation with him on my way into the office. And you know what? He stops talking to me because a car came past and he calls out, hello, Helen. He knew her by name. And he stopped and he chatted and he completely ignored me from that point on. And I just had to go down to the office for myself. But I'm like, no, you're on mission. I've got your back. Don't worry about me. You are being a church on every street. So we're gonna do this together. Do you get the togetherness of this message? Because I know some of you live this already. But what I'm saying is together. Let's cover this region. Okay, so guess what? The bucket is back. Do you remember the Reach Out Bucket from 2024? The Reach Out Bucket still exists, all those names. Our prayer team are still praying for the Reach Out Bucket. And if you have a testimony for any of those people in that bucket, let us know, because it will so encourage the prayer team and the church. But we wanna pray with you for your street, for your territory that he has given you, whatever that looks like, we're committing to pray with you. So later, We're gonna come out and we're gonna write down your street and we're gonna put it in this bucket and we're committing to pray for it together. Okay, the third thing I want you to know is you need to go in power because you are the church of Jesus Christ and what does that mean? You are his ecclesia, you are his called out ones, called out set apart, and you have authority. And really, the authority we have, if only we understood it, if only we lived our life actually knowing the spiritual authority, how would you do, how would you do life differently? How would you approach those little conversations? Jesus said, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy and drive out demons. Off you go. I love it. Go. The audacity of Jesus Christ. He said in Luke, you have authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy. He has left nothing out. And in Acts 1, when Jesus was about to leave the earth, he said, 
really the authority, I want you to see this, the full Godhead working together. Jesus said, the authority I have has come from the Father. Then Jesus says, I'm giving that authority to you. And then he says, wait, the Holy Spirit is coming and you're gonna receive power. So the authority of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all to the ends of the earth. Last week, Tyrolyn told us her testimony of India and in part of that testimony, she told how the Holy Spirit, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, helped her understand the, the Tamil language a woman who needed prayer, she actually understood in her spirit the prayer need, was able to pray for that person and that person was able to understand what was being said as well. And so I actually heard that three times last week from three people who very recently, the Holy Spirit has just interpreted the need, spoken and the prayer has been activated in just a really miraculous way. And no matter who you talk to, the Holy Spirit knows the need that's on their life and exactly what's on their heart, and he can speak to you. And I believe this, a church on every street, will be a move marked by the Holy Spirit, a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. So as you go, you need to know the power that you have received from the Holy Spirit. It's what the world needs. And last year we were given this word and I've shown it to you before, but I'm showing it to you again because what God has promised this church, I keep asking for it. God, you told us this would happen. I'm asking you again and I'm gonna pray until I see it. Macquarie Life Church will catalyze a fresh move of God in our region. Now, when that word was given to me, I was praying, how could we change the spiritual atmosphere of our region? He was God answering my prayer. The region first, and then the nation. Look out, Samaria and the ends of the earth. And it will be a move marked by a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit and something unique from Macquarie. We already know, God's doing something new here, something beautiful, something personal. Okay, I'd like you to stand. First, I just have to ask if anyone needs to follow Jesus Christ today. You haven't made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. Today's a good day. I just wanna lift your hand so I can see it because we're gonna pray for you and you're gonna receive that authority of Jesus Christ in exchange. And we're gonna send you off on this mission. Anyone need Jesus in their life today? Does anyone need the Holy Spirit, as in you have not yet been baptised or filled with the Holy Spirit. If that is you today, during this song that we're gonna sing, I just want you to come out the front over to the cross on my left-hand side and we'll pray for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit like in Acts 1, the Holy Spirit will come upon you in power. So we're gonna do that in this song. If that's you, I just want you to come over to the cross and our prayer team are gonna pray with you. For the rest of you, this is your mission, are you ready? The tables out the front have pieces of paper. We're gonna sing a song about being filled with the Holy Spirit and His presence resting on us. In the song, I want you to receive the Holy Spirit. Ask for the power of the Holy Spirit and receive the Holy Spirit. And when you know your street, I want you to come out, I want you to write it down. Could be four or five things, could be one thing, doesn't matter. Come out, write it down and it's like you taking authority. When you write it down, you are taking authority for that place that He has assigned you. And we're gonna seek its welfare. We're gonna seek its good. And then all of them are gonna go in this bucket and we're gonna pray. Have you got the assignment? Come on, Gary. I need ya. Come, Come and lead us. Let's cry out to God. Thank you for what you're doing in this place, Lord. We say yes, God. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come over say, come Holy us. Spirit. Come, come Holy on Spirit. Us. Rest on your come people. Rest on that we go out in power. Holy Spirit, come and rest on your people. 
Thanks for your message, Mindy. Take that word into your week and into your world. If you would like, you can email our church office your response to Church on Every Street and we'll put it in the bucket for you. A reminder around your giving. Proverbs 19 verse 6 says, Everyone wants to be close to the rich and famous, but a generous person has all the friends he wants. Generous people are attractive. God has called us to be generous. And through our generosity and giving, as that scripture says, you open yourself to friendships. What a reminder. Generosity breeds friendships and relationships. So thanks for being a church that sows generosity and reaps friendships and community. Worship at the Cross is happening Saturday the 24th of August at 5.30pm at Ben and Mel's house. There will be live extended worship and also time for personal ministry. Afterwards, there will be a fire pit to gather around and enjoy some supper together. All are welcome and the address can be found on the church website's event page. The Lake Macquarie Running Festival is coming up on Sunday the 25th of August. Gosh, that's only one week. I know you'll all be down there doing the half marathon, won't you? Hopefully not pulling any hamstrings or any injuries across the finishing line. However, a reminder, we are taking a volunteer team to serve at the event. Currently, we need 10 more volunteers to cheer on runners, hand out medals, hand out registration packs, and help with course marshalling. So this is where the church really comes to the forefront in serving our community. This is where our go and community action really steps up, showing our community that we value them and value what's important to them. So please register to volunteer through our church website by Wednesday the 21st of August. I'll say that again, register 21st of August to volunteer. We have Father's Day coming up very soon in September. Let's celebrate the dads in our services with the theme of fun, faith and flaws. We'll have a panel in our morning services with bacon and egg rolls for the dads. And in our 5 p.m. services, sorry, in our 5 p.m. service, we'll be in the cafe with pizza and some hang time. Thanks for tuning in today. Next week, Mark Zare is preaching. So get excited for that. We care about you and love you. So remember, we have our prayer request forms you can fill out through our church website should you need or have any prayer requests. Have a blessed week, everyone.